Coming to you straight from the Rio Grande and beyond. And beyond. Broadcasting to the four corners of the globe. So grab your seat, your coffee, or your sundowner. Okay, everybody, here we go. On point, as always. This is Gloves Off. Gloves Off. Back at you and gloves off. I'm Paul Buitor, and I'm here with one, a dear friend, one that I call my brother, his grandmaster, Wade Williams. And we're going to touch base on martial arts, Eskrima, and everything that comes with it. How are we doing, my brother? You doing good? I'm doing really good. Enjoying my I think I lost you. Did you lose me? There you go. Because um, I'm catching. Yeah, I'm catching every other word from you. Okay, hold on just a second. I'm going to leave for just a sec. Just hold okay. on. A sec. Okay, I'm back. We should be. We should. Is it still not working very well? No. Everything here looks pretty good so far. It went off again. Bring it back on. Let's see here. The video, no video. Okay, just a second. Watch reading. Go. How's that? No video. Still yet? Mm -hmm. I, I see myself. I don't. There you go. Oh, okay. Maybe it took a second. Yeah, there it is. It has like a lag time, but it'll take off from there. Well, oh. um, the yeah, there's a lag time. Okay. Uh, yeah. The question is, how have you been, my brother? You been good? I've been doing really well. Yeah, enjoying my time, enjoying my family, uh, doing things that I hadn't done in a long, long time. That's awesome. And uh, um, as you were telling me earlier, you, you're, t you're saying that retirement felt like an extended vac vacation until it just kept on going. <laughs> and the nice thing is it's still going. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I did. At first it was, yeah, yeah, definitely. At first, like I said, it was just, it seemed like a vacation, but as the days rolled on and Sometimes we're normally, you know, absolutely do Friday, do Saturday, whatever, and of what you got to do at work, but yet you're right there with the family. You're not in the moment, and now I'm actually in the moment. Oh, you're you're absolutely correct, and it's. I think it'll get everybody, and and I know that you love the martial arts, and I'm, I'm pretty sure you're going to continue extending that that family as well, and you've done a great job with with it. And, in North California, I think it's 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 magnificent. Let's touch base on the Eskrima side. How did you find out about it? Okay. And how did you get involved with it? And who are your main teachers and influencers? It's it's a wonderful story. Um, I worked at Safeway, and I met a friend. Uh, actually, I started in Stockton. Uh, this was, I believe. 80 or 81, I'm not really sure of the years. You see, they just run over each other, right? But um, I was with them for about three, three and a half years. And I worked at this one store at Charterway in Stockton. And this, he was, this guy was a bagger, really nice guy, sort of quiet, you know, sort of kept to himself, but he seemed a little different. And so I came up to him and I approached him after barely meeting him. 
And I asked him, I said, hey, do you do any martial arts or anything? And he was a little bit rude to me. He was sort of like, no, man, I, I don't do none of that. And I was like, he goes, well, why do you ask? I, I told him, I said, well, you sort of carry yourself a little different. And he really didn't want to have nothing to do with it. But then two weeks later, he came up to me and he said, um, let me ask you something. Why did you ask? And I told him, I said, man, the way you carry yourself, I said, you just seem like a rude guy. I said, and uh, I just thought maybe you might have trained. And so he pulled me aside and he told me, yes, I do. I do a screamer. But I do a screamer. I go, Eskrima, what exactly is that? And then he explained it to me. And then he told me who his, his instructor was, which is Grandmaster Angel Cabalas. And I, I remember seeing him in the 70s and Tracy doing a demonstration with a friend of mine at this park. And I said, no way. He said, yeah, I'm an advanced instructor. And I said, man, I'd love to learn that. I said, I'd love to learn weapons, knife. You know, it just, it's, it intrigued me. And when we first got together, he sat down and I sat guy drilled me for like three hours he was like if you ask if you question me you're gone if you don't listen to what i tell you you're gone i'm not dealing with it but never any attitude you do what i said i'm like oh man what did i get into and i just literally fell in love with the art and that was serata and so i got up to number eight with him and then he told me i he said brother you went as far as i could take you I want you to meet uh, the Grand Master. So then him and Carlito Bonchok took me over to uh, literally two and a half blocks from my house and I never knew. And so I went there, we, we did our thing. He said, uh, told the guys, go ahead and leave. I, I just would like to talk to Wade. So they left and uh, he says, let's see, let's see you play. So we got up and I threw and I thought I did pretty darn good. I was, I was throwing my stick. I was working, doing reverses, you know, just doing whatever I had in my tool belt to show him. And uh, he said, okay, sit down. So I sat down and he sat at the little table and he looked, please excuse my language, but he goes, okay. He says, uh, your work is shit. <laughs> and I sort of, what? And I go, are you really, sir? And he says, yes. He says, but. If you want to be my private student, he says, I'll teach you correctly. And I said, no, I'd love to do it. So then I ended up being his private student for a, quite a while. And uh, what was so nice is literally I just walk over there two and a half hours. I mean, two and a half blocks, which been two, sometimes three hours we would throw. And uh, I got my base on uh, my uh, advanced diploma and uh, advanced instructors diploma. And then he told me, he says, I really want you to go for your master's. And I go, no, I don't think I'm good enough. He goes, no, yes, you are. He says, I really think you should do it. He says, if you're concerned about pay, you don't worry about that. I want you to continue your training. So I did. And uh, I ended up getting my master's under him. And I, at, during that process, he actually asked me and a few other instructors to help him open his school back up on um, Harding Way in Stockton. And so I was part of him coming back, reopening again, which was such an honor. You know, you look back and you think, my gosh, you know, right next to Gong Lee's, which was historic with all the martial artists that go there. It, it was really an exciting time. It became extremely political in time, which ended up, which helped me to propel to sort of, I didn't say, I don't want to say I le left the art, but I, I wanted to get better. And I want. Grandmaster Leo Heron School, Bahalana. Now, if you know, if you know a little bit of the, the Stockton history, there was not good blood at that time between the two schools. And for me to even consider trying to bridge over was uh, sort of a, that was, that was a tough one because I wasn't really received at first, but then when they saw that, you know, my real intent was I just wanted to get better. I just wanted to learn more. And uh, Grandmaster Leo was so hospitable. And he, he says, you know, guys, start playing. Start working with Wade. And it seemed like they embraced me, brought me in. It wasn't like, oh, that's a Serata guy over here. They welcomed me into their school. And I got a graduate diploma from them. And then I, I ended up moving from Stockton at the time, came to Tracy. And uh, I don't know, just passed. And I heard about a gentleman named uh, Maestro Sonny Umpad. And I went ahead and uh, me and Carlito 
we were trying to find this guy. And it took us a little while, but we found out he was in Alameda. And we were able to get in there, sit down and talk with him. And I became a student with, of his from 2000 to 2006. Sonny took what I learned from Angel and Leo. And he showed me that I could do things I never honestly thought I would ever do. I, I, I felt I had too much limitations. I felt I couldn't do the stuff that he was doing. And he showed me, he was like, he, he'd shake his head and he'd have his cigarette. He'd have his Coca-Cola in the other hand. And he says, why do you think you can't do that? And I just, I, I said, I'm just not built that way. I don't think I can. He said, yes, man. And he smoked on his cigarette. He goes, you will do it. And he did. He ended up taking my Escrima and he changed everything, literally everything I had. He changed it. He extended it. He shortened it. He tightened it up. He expanded it. He helped, showed me how to dance, how to move. What my Escrima is today, I give a lot of credit to Sonny. Yeah. And after he passed, um, a few years later, I had met Ramiro Estelia, Grandmaster. A this guy person. is one of the most phenomenal. He, <laughs> he really is. He's, he's probably one of the most phenomenal men I have ever met. Humble. Uh, if you look in the encyclopedia, the word humble, and there's a picture next to it, that's Grandmaster uh, Estelia. That guy, when I first met him, he told me, he said, sit down, sit down. And I sat down across from him, and he grabbed his guitar, and he sang a song to me. I mean, I sat there, tears flowing down my eyes. I'm in love with this man. And I said, sir, I would be so honored just if I could come down to Fresno and train with you. And he said, oh, sure. And we, we shared the Lord for, man, a number of months. Uh, I've known him now, I think, what, 12 years. And he just, just a magnificent man. And uh, I met some great people through him. I actually have uh, some students that uh, I met through him. And uh, that's sort of my travels in a nutshell, you know, the four, uh, to me, great grandmasters that uh, I had trained under. And uh, what an honor, what a blessing. Absolutely. And the, the, um, Ramiro Estalila is the one that I know and through you all. And he's just a magnificent in, individual and what he teaches and the way he teaches and just it's it's nice that we have you all have that treasure because it's in California and we in America are very pleased to have that uh, type of individual you all as well. But uh, what I'm saying is, he's a hidden treasure amongst the martial artists. Yeah, and um, people should take note of that. And I'm glad that you are and you're continuing forward with what he's taught you because it's very important. It's very important what he did. Yeah. What he's done. and it's it, it's great to see. And how are you at when when you teach and because you, you've 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 learned of by far of the best the, the you know the the icons of of, of Eskrima in the United States. What was the differences between that that you learned from Bahalana from Serrada and all that? What was the main differences? What would you say? Um, I think for Serrada. Well, let me do Bahalana first. Bahalana is uh, very direct. They're heavy-handed, heavy. -handed, heavy uh, they throw hard. They're very committed in what they do. Um, when it goes to the the Largo Mono part of it, uh, I believe the work is beautiful. It's very simple, five five point five strike system, and they just they let it go. And they do the coconut drill. They do the advance. They do the double. They they got different drills that helps you to build you know momentum and how to move the big stick. The Defundo is a good, strong, solid art. Um, it just, it's very, like I said, it's very heavy handed. The Serrata, what I really saw in the Serrata years later, um, I would hear people say, oh, I tried Serrata. It, it, it's, it's really nothing. It's, it's, it's okay. But what they, if you don't stick with something long enough to understand the concepts and principles, just the movement is basic like everybody else. But when you start sort of like the onion, when you peel, you keep finding more and more and more. The layers under Serrata, to me, is unparalleled because there's in there that even today after, man, you know, all these years that I've been doing it and working with my students is even more still yet coming out of that. And Angel used to tell me, he says, you're going to you're going to see. 
He told me, you're going to see. And I said, well, why don't you just share it with me? He goes, you're going to see. And he smiled at me. And, I, and I'm starting to see. There really is a lot of layers to it that some of the arts don't have. You know, and it tries to uh, cover every angle, every understanding of movement, fakes, picks, because sometimes when you're just going for that, that's not the one that they want. They want the third hit on you, not the first. They want to set you up for the first two. And Serata helps you to build, to get that understanding and put yourself in a better position. Sonny's art, the difference there is, like he told me, I stole people. And I, I started laughing. What, what do you mean? He said, I stole from some of the greats. He says, and by taking some of the things they did and making it mine, I adjusted it to me. He says, and now my art, the core, a, sort of a compilation of all these different arts that he had seen and met from the old grandmasters that passed, you know, years ago. Um, and he made it work and he melded them in. He uh, brought it together. He didn't try to reinvent the wheel. He just made it more smooth. And uh, that, that style, it was so vast that a lot of material, but you have to be able to put that material together. Serata and Bahalana had a progression. Sonny's art was more, here's all the material. Do, do what you feel you need to do with it. And it really made me real well because I was able to integrate that movement, uh, say even a Serata entry with the Bahalana middle work and then finish with Nina. And it flowed beautifully. It flows beautifully. And you try to pick it because of the Serata base and the defensive line. It's extremely to get in. It's really hard to get in there. And then with Sonny, I'm able not to just like sort of, they would say, hold the refrigerator, you know, guard the refrigerator type of movement. I'm able to move around and still hold the defensive line and you, you can literally disappear in front of somebody and they don't even know you're to the side of them yet. Right. Now, right. Uh, Romero's art, it's, 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 long, it's a long stick, a lot of katas, forms, and it helps you to understand movement, uh, fulcrum, uh, and uh, it's a beautiful big sword art. It's a beautiful sword art. And that's sort of the difference, but yet at the same token, they're all the same piece of the pie. They're just on one end or on the different ends. And that's what I love about all the different arts, how they come together and yet hold their own, you know, individuality. Absolutely. And that's what I've, that's what I've seen. And, you know, I want to thank all, all you all from, from, from Stockton, because you all have embraced me as a brother, you know, and brought, yeah. brought me in and, and as such. And, and it's, it's, it yeah. has, it's a lot to the instructors that were there that taught you all, because uh, there might have been some friction at one times amongst you all back then, but you all still had that family clan that protect our crew, and if he's with us, he's with us type of mentality, which is no longer seen or rarely, rarely seen in today's martial arts that, that are out there. Right. And it, it shows a lot for those instructors that you mentioned because they kind of kept everybody, even though they were different, they still kept everybody with that fellowship loving type of, uh, let's love our brother kind of thing. Let's help them out if he needs help. And that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's great to see because you don't see that. It's rare. It's rare. It's true. It's, you know, it's sort of like, well, it's sort of like with family that don't see each other that much, but when they see each other, they embrace each other. It's like no time in between. And that's sort Absolutely. of a nice thing. Because I had seen my Bahala brothers a while back, in, you know, in quite a while. And when I did see them, it was like we never missed a day. They embraced me. I embraced them. Uh, I see some of the guys that I trained with, Serata, not so much anymore. But when I would see them, it was like, you're right back home. And that, you're right. And that's really a, a great, that's a great feeling to know you can step back and they'll be there for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's in. It, and true arts, what I've noticed is that the true arts have that from them. The arts of reality, if I, if I want to put them that way. You know, when you start yeah, getting the, further and further away, they lose. Yeah, because you know what's at stake is true lineage. And, you know, so many people, they do things through seminars and, 
they learn a little bit here, a little bit there, and they have they don't have that true lineage base. And uh, those that have stuck it out and done their time, it means something to them. And that's why you get that connection, whether you have a little friction or not. It's still that connection because of that time spent, even at times tears, you know. And so that, I think that's what creates the bond. Absolutely. And um, what, what would you compare? Because you've, you've seen a lot of martial arts and you've been around. What would you say is, is the difference between Eskrima and the rest of the arts? Um, that's a tough one. I think, uh, in some of the, some of the different arts that I've seen, you learn technique and then you learn reaction after you have the technique down where, when it comes to a screamer, you have, you got to learn your reaction, but you learn your taught reaction through technique. And so if something comes at you quickly, you don't have time to grab a stance and go at it. It's, it's just not, it's not there. But if you're just with your family walking and something goes down very quick, you're able to respond and you're able to respond very quickly with technique because of the fact that that's how you were trained from a relaxed, sort of like, like that. So you're just walking along. You're not, you're not tense. You're not worried about things around you. You're not paranoid. You know, and I'm not saying other arts teach that, but I'm saying it seems like your screamer came at it a little more casual, you know, a little bit more down home. So you're a little bit more relaxed relaxed or you know respect is not demanded but respect is given and uh i think if anything that might be the difference i know for hand speed reaction time like that uh the screamer because you're dealing with the speed of the stick the speed of knife uh swords because they're so quick the action time is is a lot more uh precise and you have a lot better accuracy because of the, you know, the, the speed of the stick and stuff. So you have to react quicker. And I think, uh, if anything, that's one thing that I've seen, you know, but as far as pure uh, respect on the floor, that down more, um, where the, the scream was a little more, you know, willy nilly in a way. Uh, and I don't mean that disrespectfully, but I mean, it's just, it's a little more relaxed at home, like in your backyard, you know, when you're with me, it's you're relaxed, but if you're in a, a little bit more of a business sense, a more, uh, little more tight-fisted in a way, maybe. Yeah, I understand, I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying because, you know, I see it from coming from a site and I see that embracement of fellowship. I see that and not only the effectiveness of the arts that are there, but the styles because each, you have the, the styles and then everybody else took it and it's stylistically change it a little bit, you know, and uh, right. it's beautiful to see. It's still the same basics. It's kind of like boxing. All around the world, mm -hmm. you have a uh, jab, cross, uppercut, and hook. It's just how you do them differently. And that's what right. I see, with, especially with the Serrata of, uh, side of things. Everybody knows the same thing, but everybody uses it. The powers are different. The way it's done is a little bit different from each one, the intent. I guess it's, the personalities change. Yeah, and, and the thing with Serata in particular is uh, I had talked to Angel about the different ways that he taught different people. And he told me it's not so much the approach. He said, it's the size of the man, the length of the man, the shortness of the man. He said, it's, it's take all these things into account, watch his movement, and then start teaching him to his strengths. Once he starts getting his strengths, now work on his weaknesses. Because what he was saying is, and especially initially off the top, if you're learning something, what's the first thing that happens to you? You start getting confident and you might put yourself in a bad position. So learn as much as you can to your strengths first. Then let's start building on your weaknesses and make them your strength now. And so he told me, you got to teach everybody differently. And I think that has really helped me to be uh, a better instructor because I had some guys that were, you know, six, five, six, six, that would sit where I'm sitting and they'll reach my sink. You know, and then some right, guys, yeah. they're five, six, and they can't even reach across the table. And, uh, but yet they all learn art, but they all learned it differently. And it's all built to their strengths. Then we start working on their weaknesses and it's been successful. Absolutely. Absolutely. And a great philosophy of pedagogy that of teaching wise, 
that's come out of there. Um, I know COVID stopped a lot of things last year. A lot of, uh, we lost a couple of folks that, but you know, along the way. But I think that this year, I think everything's gonna get back out, um, a little bit normal, if we can say that. What are your changes or how are you gonna be teaching a little bit different now than before, now that you have a little more time? Um, I'm looking to add another day, of course. Uh, I have one student that uh, he's committed to helping me market because I'll be the first to tell you, I am the absolute worst when it comes to marketing for our, our school, myself. I just don't, I just don't do it. I, I, I never have. Uh, I'm not good at it. I sort of rely on any of my students that are good at it to, you know, sort of get the word out about our school because we're really not known. You know, we're not on every corner. And, uh, but when they, people do come and they see what we do, they really do embrace it and they see the value in it. And people that I've taught that don't even, you know, have no martial art experience, they, when they able, you know, when they do leave after two, three years, four years, whatever, they're a debt. They're, they're doing, they're doing well. So I'm looking to sort of grow the school more in time than uh, expanding to get a second school or a third school. You know, we had done that and we actually had up to three schools at one time, but it's, it's a matter of having a good home base here and strengthening people the best that I can, get more people in, open up another day, and let people really see the family art. I, that's what I call what we have as a family art. And I want them to be embraced into our family. You know, because when I teach, I teach family values. You know, I teach the Lord. You know that. I share the Lord. And, uh, and I share the, the art the way it was given to me the best that I can. I don't hold turn on you. Well, then maybe you should never took him on as a student to start with. If you felt that way. Yeah. And so I give my students everything I, have, you know, and I, I end up falling in love with my students. I really do. And I want the best for them. So that's what I'm looking for. Just expand days, expand time, uh, get out there and let them see what we do. Absolutely. And you know, that's a great, that's a great, way to think you know and there was times i guess when we all kind of grew through through our travels within the martial arts and teaching you know we we wanted them champions we wanted those fighters and now it's kind of like i just want good citizens in society <laughs> yeah <You know? laughs> yeah i want, it's I want true. My, it's you know true. what i'm saying that's as long as they can defend themselves and they can if need be god forbid they have to one day as long as they can right. take care of themselves that instant that they have to, it's fine. You know, if they want to go to the ring, we can take them that route as well. It takes a different person, different mentality. And uh, it's, 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 it changes things. You can't, you can't make everybody a fighter in the ring. Correct. Very few, very few. And uh, so you just have to teach everybody to be correct, correctly and appreciated and have that respect towards society. I think that's that's what we have to go through. I, I love that concept that you have. And we have to get together soon. We have I to like get together it. soon. It's been, yeah. it's been it's been a while. Let's just see how let's see this calm down a little bit more and then we can start planning out and see how we can do some stuff. That would be great. I would love that. And actually uh, teach, you know, start working out a little bit more. The last For time sure. it was it, it was it was great. We had some great fun, but I think I think uh, now I think you we can at least you know all all the attention is going to be towards towards you. I think so. I think it'll be great. Oh man, I'm excited. I really am. I'm excited to go forward. I'm excited. I'm excited to see what God has for us, and uh, I expect some really great people to come into my life again, and hopefully have a them their families. And just build, just build every, everybody the best we can. Give them the best we got. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, my brother, you know, we're always here. And uh, I want to thank you for continuing. And I wish you the best. I wish you and your crew the best, the family out there. And give a big hug to everybody. And I hope everybody's staying safe. For sure. Thank you so much, man. Please give love to your family, brother. All right, brother. Until next time, much peace. All right. Talk to you soon.
Today, in America, more than 5.5 million men, women, and children train in a martial art regularly. Bui Tarun Academy has been serving Laredo for over 30 years now. Our adult classes are geared for producing the best in you, teaching you street-ready techniques. With the arts of Savat and Kinpo, you'll learn the traditions of these sciences of combat as passed down professor to student. Bonjour, friends of Professor Withron. The COVID-19 scare is almost over. Be sure to bring the kids back to the professor's training and help them build their bodies, self-respect, self-confidence, and self-defense. The professor is a very competent and amazing man of several talents, aside from being a lovable teddy bear and a funny man. Get back to the studios. This is Sam Booth calling from Phoenix, Arizona. Have a great training. Bye for now. Hello, my name is Manuel Osano. I've been trained in the martial arts for close to 50 years. I trained in many martial arts from different masters and grandmasters throughout the years from the 70s all the way to now. I've known uh, Professor uh, Paul Vitron for about 30 years. He has done the same, trained in many different arts with many masters. He's traveled all over France, uh, studying with uh, surviving Salat grandmasters, did his research. This man not just knows uh, the fighting techniques and the art, but the philosophy, the history and the strategy on applying this arts combined with all the other arts. So this man is a wealth of knowledge for anyone seeking instruction in real martial arts and street martial arts. This is the school to go to in Laredo, Texas. For those of you who are away from Laredo, this is the guy to look for, okay? He's very well uh, versed in all the fighting styles of the different arts he is trained in and would highly recommend the school. Hi, this is Mike Lackery from San Antonio, Texas, home of CMOC and the Wing Chun Boxing Academy. I'm here to tell you about my good friend, Paul Bouton. He is reopening his school in Laredo, Texas. Paul is a wealth of knowledge. I've known him a long time. I highly suggest everybody in that area get with it. Go down there and train. Times are getting tough here. And with this COVID-19, we need to support local business. So I highly suggest go see Paul Bouton at the Don Zeru Sabat Academy in Laredo, Texas. You will not regret it. Be good. Come train at the best kept secret of Laredo. Give us a call for your free evaluation at 956 401 4868 or check out our website at savat.biz follow us on youtube and facebook